Welcome to this uh, React Redux tutorial. Real quick, this is not a tutorial on how to get started with React. Um, this is for the people, for example, if you already know how to use React, but you've never used Redux, or if you have used Redux in JavaScript and want to transition over to TypeScript, or if you have used Redux, but you're not familiar with the newer uh, features of, for example, like using hooks or using slices, this is definitely for you. So stick around and let's get into it. All right, so to get started, go ahead and clone the application I've provided for you and navigate to the root directory. Once you're inside the root directory, run npm install and then npm start to start the application for the first time. And this is what our application looks like. We have two pages, a home page and a to-do page. And inside of the to-do page, we can start adding to-dos. So we'll add two to-dos and save them. Now, if we navigate to the homepage and back into my to-dos, those values are now lost. In order to fix this, we'll use Redux. Before we get started, let's go ahead and stop the application. And for this tutorial, we'll be using the Redux toolkit, which makes integration much simpler. In order to do that, let's go ahead and bring in the Redux toolkit, React Redux, and the types. Let's wait for that to install, and I'll speed up this part. Let's start by adding some boilerplate. So under source, add a new directory and you can call it whatever you like, whatever makes more sense. Uh, I'll just name mine store and add a new file inside of it called rootstore.ts. Open the file you just created. In my case, I'm opening up the rootstore.ts and we'll go ahead and add the following code inside of it. And what this is doing is just simply configuring our store. Uh, the store is where all the states within React are placed inside of. For example, our to-dos is one of those states. To register the root store in Redux, open the index file and import the provider from React Redux and your root store. Inside of the store directory, create another call to do and add a to do reducer file. Inside of our to do reducer, we're going to go ahead and import the to do item type from our to do components and we'll create the initial state, the to do reducer, and the to do action. Now, normally we wouldn't have all of this in within the same file. However, we'll be refactoring later on in this video and it will be easier to show the changes. Now, the next thing that we'll do is we'll create some action types. So if you recall back to the UI, we had three main buttons. One was to add a to-do, save it, and then obviously remove it. Now, I want to get a little bit more IntelliSense. So I'll extend the any action to include a payload property. This is not required. Uh, it is just personal preference and obviously if you're using uh, JavaScript, you won't really need to do this part. Let's go back to our to-do reducer and instead of using the any action, we'll bring in the action type and we'll use that instead. Now that we have a reducer, let's go ahead and add it to the store. So back in the root store file, 
let's add our reducer and we'll call it to do's. And by the way, whatever you call it, that's how you will access that state. So for example, you would say, okay, state dot to do's. Before we start using the state, we need to add two more types. And those types are the root state type, which is the return type of the get state method. And then the second type is your app dispatch. If you're using JavaScript, you do not need to do this part because you can use the use dispatch and use selector directly from the toolkit. With those types created, let's add two custom hooks inside a new file called hooks. And that is all the boilerplate we need to get started. Navigate to the to-do wrapper inside of the components directory and replace the add, save, and remove methods with Redux. First, let's remove the use state. You no longer need that. Instead, we'll be using the use dispatch and use selector from uh, the types that we created inside of the hooks uh, file. Also bring in your to-do action. You'll be needing that to dispatch your actions. Now you just need to get the instance of dispatch and your list of to-dos. As mentioned before, we have three main actions, the add, save, and remove. So we'll go ahead and start with the add. First, we'll dispatch a type of to-do action that add and we'll copy this piece and add it into the reducer. So we'll add a case for to-do action that add, and then we're just going to return the new state. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the save and remove method. Uh, in here, we're going to dispatch the save action. Uh, the only difference is that we'll include the payload and the payload includes whatever it is that you need. In our case, we need an index and the save item. So we'll just have that as an object. And for example, if you look at the remove in that one, we just need the index. So that's the only thing that we're, we're including in the payload. Now that we've implemented Redux, let's go ahead and start the application. To test this, let's go ahead and add a few to-dos and make sure you're saving them. And if everything works correctly, when you navigate away from this page and then you navigate back to it, we should be able to still see them there. Before we continue, let's make some improvements. In the home page, I want to see how many to-dos are still not completed. In order to do this, let's bring in our use store selector Let's get our to-dos. And then from those to-dos, let's get a list of pending to-dos by using a filter. And then finally, update the HTML. So that way, if they are pending to-dos, we'll render them. If not, we'll show a different message. Back in our application, we can see the updated HTML message saying, hey, there's no pending to-dos. So let's go ahead and add a few. Make sure that you save them. And then if we go back to the home page, we should see two of those. And let's just go back and set one to complete. Obviously, make sure you save. And great, we're only showing one. 
Now, you might be tempted to add the filter inside of your use selector. Don't, and I'll show you why. First, let's add a couple of logs to check when this method is called. So first, I'm adding the first console info when it's rendering, and let's add another console info inside of the selector itself. Okay, so back in the browser, open up your developer tools, make sure you clear your console and refresh the page. And once you do, let's pay attention to the what gets logged. So for example, in here, we can see that the rendering is logged once, the selectors are logged twice, and that is because the selectors run on mount and then on dead mount, essentially. Now go ahead and move the filter into the selector and then make sure that you rename to do's to pending to do's. Now, if we go back to the browser and clear the console, refresh the page, you can see that rendering is uh, showing twice. And that is because the filter returned a new instance of the array causing React to think that it needed to reload. Because we're only using the length, we could just return the length. And this works because length is a value type, not a reference type like the array. So up to this point, you've implemented Redux using a more traditional approach, using reducers and action types. Uh, the only real new thing that we've seen to this point is the configuration of the store, use selectors, and the use of dispatch. But there is a few more cool things that I want to show you. Up to this point, you've used synchronous actions. So for example, if you refresh the page, you'll notice that your list is gone. So we'll be using index DB to persist the state, and that requires an asynchronous operation. Import the create a sync thunk, and I will explain shortly what this is doing. Let's walk through this. Create a async thunk returns a method with three prototype functions called pending, fulfilled, and rejected. The first generic is, the re is your return type. This is what is passed down to the reducer after the method completes. And the second generic is the argument in the Lambda expression. And you'll see that in a moment. The first argument is the action type prefix. Because we're replacing the safe method, We'll pass in the save constant. The second argument is the callback function that does the work. Within this callback, the first argument is the generic type we mentioned earlier. In our case, it's an object with an index and a saved item. And the second argument is the thunk API. The thunk API gives you access to the state if you need it, and it also gives you a method to reject this operation if an error is detected. We won't use it in our example since we don't need access to the state and we're not handling any errors. Enough of that. Let's go ahead and bring some logic. First, import the to-do API from the API directory. And then let's just simply call the to-do API.setItem method. Just pass in the index and the item itself. Now head back to the to-do wrapper. And let's bring in this save async to do function that we just created. Now remove the dispatch and replace it with dispatch, save async to do, and pass in the payload. Let's test the changes. Uh, first, open up the browser, refresh the page, and add a to do. Once you add the to do, navigate back to the home page and then back to the to do's page. And as you can see, something went wrong. The to-do is empty, so that means that we failed to save somewhere. 
Now open up your developer tools, navigate into your index DB by going into the application tab. And if we look inside of the to do's table, we can see our safe item there. So the issue must be inside of the reducer. Let's verify our action type by putting a breakpoint inside of the switch statement. And here's the problem. So remember when I said that the first argument was the prefix, that's what I meant. So they prefix whatever it is you pass in to their current state. So for example, it will be either pending, fulfilled or rejected. So what we want to do is change that to fulfill. Also, let's just double check what the action is. And if you hover over it, the payload is the object. But technically, that's not what we want. We want index and then the safe item. So let's go ahead and fix that as well. Start by changing the case statement from to do action dot save to save to do a sync that fulfill the type. Also change the generic on the create a sync method to be the type that we want to return, which is essentially the same one that comes in into the function and change the return type to include the index as well. Let's test one more time. From here on out, you should be able to implement the get and remove methods yourself using the same steps that we did for the save method. We're almost at the end here. But before I show you slides, let's cover create action and create reducer methods first. Begin by replacing our to do action constants with actions. And notice that this is similar to our create async thunk, where the create action takes in a generic, and this generic represents the argument that the action takes. Now I'm going to paste in the create reducer method and let's go through it. And as you can see, it is very similar to a regular reducer. A few things to note though, is that your to do actions are now methods, but you can still pass them in your safe to do a sync instead of specifying that type. You can now just call it directly as safe to do a sync that fulfilled and we're mutating the state whereas before you had to clone it and return the clone. And this makes your code less error prone. Because we changed to do actions from constants to actions, we just have to update the create async thunk to take in the to do action that save that type. We also just need to update the to-do wrapper. So instead of dispatching the action type, we dispatch the actions themselves, just like we did with the save to do a sync. If you follow along so far, you'll notice this error that says cannot access before initialization. What this means is that one of our methods is being called before it has been initialized. So if we go back to our reducer, we need to move the to do action and the save to do a sync before the to do reducer. Let's do a quick test to make sure everything still works. And the last thing we'll do today is combine the create actions and reducer with slides. A 
Okay, so up to this point, everything should be fairly familiar. Uh, you know, the, the first argument is just your prefix. The second argument is your initial state. And then inside of the reducers object, what we're adding in here is our action creators. Now, anything you add inside of the reducers does two things. Essentially, it creates an action for you, and then it also creates the reducer. Because of this, we only want to add the add and remove action. We don't want to add the save to do a sync because that is itself its own action. Whoops, I got my C-sharp mix over here. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and fix that. We still need to register our save to do a sync. Uh, and the way that we do that is by adding it into our extra reducers method. And essentially this is where you register anything that, for example, already has an action created. Uh, in our case, our uh, save to do a sync is already an action, as I mentioned earlier. Therefore, instead of adding it into the reducers block, you would add it here. And this is the same pattern as what's inside of the create reducer. So we'll just copy that piece of code and paste it inside of the builder. One thing you might have noticed is that we did not create a default state. And that is because lights already create one of those for you. And now we just simply export our action and reducer from this slide. We don't have to do actions anymore, so make sure you update the save to do a sync. Uh, just pass it in whatever prefix you want. I'll just make mine the slide name for slash save a sync. We'll do one last round of testing to make sure everything still works. All right, and that is the end of this video. Uh, thank you for sticking it out with me. And if you're wondering why I have a different shirt, that's because it's taking me two days to edit this video. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, for the next video, let me show you a sneak peek of what I want to do. So I'll be converting a Raspberry Pi into a smart do doorbell using uh, machine learning. So we'll be using some computer vision in order to recognize the family and maybe hopefully even open the door for us. Um, so that should be a fun little project. So stick around and uh, till next time.